Chris Bumstead might not be a bum himself due to all the trend bologna sandwiches and duck eggs he can afford, but does his diet say otherwise? Is his diet up to the standards of Mr. Physique, Mr. Olympia? And for anyone unfamiliar, it's a category of bodybuilding that basically means you don't use as many drugs as the other bodybuilders. So let's take a look at his day of eating on a bulk. All right, so meal number one, super basic. It's two whole eggs, 190 grams of egg whites, some turkey bacon, two slices of turkey bacon. And then I have two of these little oat bars that Courtney made. I don't know the exact what's in them, but she put them in her MyFitnessPal, so I'm gonna have to get it from her. But she, the total tray she made with 1300 calories, divided it by six, I'm eating two pieces, so it's like 430 calories. And then I put this into my fitness pal, this is 278 calories. So my breakfast is only 711 calories. Normally it's a lot more than that. And I'm actually like starving right now. So if you're someone who has no appetite in the morning, which I know a lot of people do, especially once you've been bulking for longer, that that's when that morning cardio really helps. If you wake up and you're just not hungry, wake up like 30 minutes earlier, do a little cardio and it will help you eat more. I mean, I've watched a couple of this guy's videos in the past and I don't ever remember him having this much energy when talking, you know, like he's caffeinated out of his mind, uh, which clearly he didn't show as something he had before. But this first meal is basic conventional wisdom, like what people think is healthy, basically low fat, whole grains, you know, at least he did put some whole eggs in there. But we know the food quality that he's using here is definitely not, you know, from a local farm, organic, the best you can get. You know, he has the, the bottle of ketchup there, which is, you know, clearly not some type of homemade or organic ketchup. Generally speaking, when the food quality is high, you don't really have anything to critique, anything to worry about. You remove all of those negative pollutants and chemicals that plague the modern food supply, and you increase the vitamin, mineral, and fatty acid content, balance everything out so that your body can function at its optimal. Your conventional eggs are throwing your omega fatty acid ratios out of whack. They have estrogenic herbicide concerns, and of course, probably hundreds and hundreds of minor concerns we can't even list. Egg whites in that high of an amount definitely cause gut issues for most people. They deplete biotin. Turkey bacon is like the pinnacle of, you know, like soccer mom health, like, oh, pork bacon's bad for you. Let me get some turkey bacon. And it, it's just the same omega-6 laden crap because, you know, they feed turkeys and pigs basically the same. Yeah, I mean, obviously this is better than a standard American diet, but I wouldn't say it's exceptionally healthier than most people eat. These oat bars are so horrible for your gut. You know, bananas have lectins and certain anti-nutrients that are horrible, 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 really do cause leaky gut on their own. The egg, throwing the omega fatty acid ratios off even more. Those negative things we previously spoke about. And peanut butter is not a great choice. You know, I guess it's not the end of the world if you have some organic peanut butter once a week, a couple times a month. But having that much peanut butter, hundreds and hundreds of calories on a daily basis is just putting your omega-6 so high, the mold, the mycotoxins, the other stuff that's typical to peanuts, something that's harvested conventionally, sprayed with so much stuff, stored in you know low quality conditions, not ideal. I'm gonna make those oat bars. Courtney made them, she posted them on her channel. <laughs> but this is a boring little chicken and rice. Sadly, I ran out of broccoli, so I had some peas and carrot frozen mix in the freezer. I'm trying to get my veggies in still in the off season because I neglected that a little bit last year. This year, I'll be better. It's 230 grams of white rice, 165 grams of chicken breast, and I put in 10 grams of ghee butter. This is like clarified lactose-free butter, and it tastes fucking good. My parents used to always put butter in rice when I was younger, and it tasted amazing. So this is just a little extra fast. 10 grams of it is 90 calories, so a little bit extra in there. And yeah, this is what... Meal number two looks like keeping it simple and keeping it clean. Hey, you would think someone whose livelihood depends so much on what they eat would know a little bit more about food and nutrition. You know, ghee is clarified butter, and all butter is lactose-free. I don't know why he said lactose-free. The difference between ghee and butter is that the milk proteins are removed, not the lactose, which is the milk sugar. 
And on paper, if this entire meal was organic and he removed the vegetables, it would actually be pretty healthy. But it is kind of hard to source chicken that is of high quality since he's not using high quality organic ingredients. You know, what type of feed was the chicken getting? What type of water was the rice grown in? How polluted is everything? You know, throwing a bag of frozen vegetables into your meal is worse off than not having them at all. Most people are not deficient in the nutrients that are contained in vegetables. I mean, you could go your whole life without eating them as most of our ancestors did and be perfectly fine. You know, the ghee on paper is a good source of fat because, you know, it's not super high in omega-6. Usually grass-fed is pretty accessible and it keeps things in balance. I'm now eating meal number three. I have 156 grams of ground turkey to be specific and 300 grams of raw weight sweet potato. I weigh my sweet potato raw because I, you, I only cook one meal at a time and it would just be weird to not do it any other ways. And I'm putting my sriracha up combo on this and it actually tastes so good. I lather it in sriracha and then a little ketchup to like dim down the heat because I'm not very good with hot sauce. This is typical bodybuilding stuff. What the average person thinks is healthy. Ground turkey, oh, lean protein, no fat. Sweet potatoes, oh, of course they're healthy. I'm not a fan of either of these sources of caloric energy or nutrition in general. I think, you know, beef, venison, some type of ruminant meat, or, you know, the highest quality poultry or fish that you can access is a much better source. Going conventional is always going to have omega-6 concerns. The meat is just so full of chemicals and antibiotics and stuff you don't want to be consuming. And I've never found one person that digests sweet potatoes well. I'm kind of against them as a carbohydrate in general. I think white potatoes are okay, like russet and red potatoes work for some people, but the rice, the grains seem to be better on most people's stomachs if they're prepared properly, especially you know, from what I've seen when people eat sweet potatoes in large amounts. <laughs> All right, pre-workout snack is going to be a little apple before I head to the gym. I like having fruit because fruit is health and health is wealth. And some of <laughs> none other than the sea bum pre-workout. So he's saying very, very, very taken for granted, appeal to authority stuff. Oh, apples are obviously healthy because fruit is healthy. Apple a day keeps the doctor away. It's just nonsense. Just look up an apple on a nutrient database and all you really see is that it has a small amount of vitamin C which is negated by the high sugar content and a very small amount of B vitamins. You know, apples are, are great for the high water content, the volume, the fiber, the gut motility, but you know, some people don't digest them too well. And uh, of course it's not organic. So, you know, how many chemicals are in it? You know, I mean, I've eaten organic apples over the past few months myself. You know, I think it's a food that you could certainly include in your diet. It's just, it's overvalued for sure. Today, as I'm filming, this is the day after that launch, and it went so well. I'm so happy with how everything went. It's completely sold out of this and the protein in like seven and a half hours or something, a little over seven hours. So that's insane. We were planning on like talking about if it went a week, how long it would take to sell out and everything. And it just blew up straight out of the gate. So thank you guys. This is how most of these people get successful. You know, they work very hard. They have good genetics. They do well on a couple bodybuilding shows and then they work with some co-packer manufacturer to launch their own supplement. Now, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because a lot of people do it, but you know, he's not making a lot of that money. You know, the supplement co-packing company is, he's kind of just the face of it. And it's unlikely that there is anything high quality or special in these. It's basically a generic pre-workout supplement or a generic protein powder with his face, his logo slapped on it, nothing special. You know, when I started all of my companies, Organ Supplements, Frankie's Naturals, the reason I started those companies in the first place was because there weren't products available like them on the market in general. You know, and I have ideas for my own natural pre-workout as well. It's just, you know, I didn't do it to slap my face on the label and say, hey, buy Frank's products. No, buy these products that you can't find anywhere else because we're missing these aspects of health in our life. So, you know, it's a little disappointing, but you can't expect anyone to, to have such an understanding of health and nutrition as it wouldn't be approachable 
compared to what everyone else is doing. Makes me wonder if this is really what this guy eats, if he's just putting on an act, who knows? So much for that. I really appreciate anyone who got one, anyone who supported me. It's the only reason I can do stuff like this and make my own products and have fun like that is because of you guys. So I appreciate it. And a huge thank you to Jack Factory for entrusting me to put my literal name on a product with theirs beside it. So I really, I think it's really cool that they trusted me with that. I don't know if these people are just like not business minded or they're in a position where they're not allowed to do things on their own. This guy could literally take, you know, what I'm sure he has plenty of money saved up, launch his own supplement line with a private contract manufacturer and make most of the money himself. It doesn't seem like he's making that much money off this deal. All right, to post-workout meal, this is one of my favorite meals in the off season because it's easy to get a lot of calories in. I used to eat like this meal, but like double the size back in my heyday of bulking last year. And it's just brown rice pasta, ground turkey, and some marinara sauce. This Stefan Stefano, Stefano's marinara sauce is fucking, it's amazing. You don't get sick of it. I eat it every single day and it tastes really good every single time. And with ground turkey and this brown rice pasta, it's really good. The company of this one is called Pasta Joy or Tinkiata, one or two of those. Some people say that brown rice pasta gets soggy. This one does not get mushy at all. It's like, just like real pasta. I actually can't tell the difference between this. And it's just made out of brown rice. So, double bonus for me. I'm cooking this up right now, and I will show you the meal when it's ready. Here is the final product, bowl overflowing. And this isn't even as big as I used to eat it. But for reference, this pasta, 80 grams of it dry is 300 calories. And I used to have 200 grams of it. This time I'm having 140 grams, because I'm not quite back at that point. But 140 grams is 575 calories from the past alone. You know, he's getting a lot of his calories from that ground turkey, which again is not the ideal source of protein for reasons we already stated. Brown rice pasta, I mean, I guess if you get some organic stuff, it's decent. But I wish, you know, we had legitimate data and there was actually research done on what's going into the conventional modern food supply because we really don't know how many pollutants, how much stuff people are consuming every day, especially these bodybuilders that are eating incredibly high volumes of these foods. You know, you really want to go organic. You really want to go high quality, even as the average person, let alone when you're consuming five, six, seven thousand 7,000 calories per day, which is never healthy. And it's even worse when you're overeating low quality, crappy food. Meal number five, this is where things get even more exciting than pasta. Look how delicious that is. I have to hide my face so facial recognition. But this meal is quesadillas, two quesadillas to be exact. And just look at that again. That's fucking heaven right there. This is the favorite thing I eat all day. I've been eating this every day for like two weeks and I do not get sick of it. And I've been dipping it in guacamole or it's homemade. It's just one full avocado with like a lime squeezed in there and a bunch of cilantro. And I dip the quesadilla in there and it tastes absolutely amazing. This meal consists of one full avocado, two 10 inch tortillas, 160 grams of chicken breast, and like a third cup of this dairy free Daya shredded oh God. cheese. I'm not, I try not to eat a lot of dairy because it doesn't sit well in my stomach. So I got this dairy free stuff and it actually tastes really good. I haven't eaten cheese in so long. I don't know if it tastes the same or different as real cheese, but it tastes good. As we've said with every meal, if this was high quality, it would actually be good. And if he's gonna eat regular flour tortillas, why doesn't he have regular white pasta? But you know, even an organic durum wheat semolina would be much healthier than the brown rice pasta he had. And for this meal, you know, you can get high quality organic tortillas at most health food stores now. You know, he's eating Daya dairy-free cheddar cheese. And if you don't tolerate dairy, don't go to those vegan alternatives because they taste like crap and they're not good for you and you want to figure out what the reason you're not tolerating dairy is and start addressing that is it a past nutrient imbalance do you have toxicity of certain minerals or vitamins who knows because i'm not the best at eating a large amount of fruits and vegetables and not everyone is i'm going to sip on this daily greens here oh my god i can't it's oh my god
Did Big Broccoli get this guy? This is hilarious. Revive Daily Greens, Whole Food Greens Powder, Daily Source of Micronutrients, Prebiotic and Probiotic Formula. Look, I'm not going to look at the laundry list of ingredients here. If you're taking like conventional modern vegetables and you're freeze drying them and you're grinding them up, the only thing it's going to do is give you whatever pollutants were in those vegetables when they were grown and possibly the anti-nutrients, the compounds in those really dark greens might cause some liver issues, some overall metabolic dysfunction. There's, there's no reason you ever need to consume vegetables for any reason. Source of micronutrients? No, it's not. Prebiotic and probiotic formula. The strains of bacteria they usually put in these products are not correct in the right ratios. And even if they were, the bacteria is usually dead by the time you get it. And the amount of bacteria in these things is like putting you know a bucket of water in the ocean it's not significant it's not high enough volume it's not taken on a consistent enough basis you know this is chocolate flavored who knows how many chemicals and additives they're putting in this it's absolutely stacked full of greens fruits uh, you're not going to read that at all yeah greens, let's put 40 pieces of crap in it so it's actually a really good product and this is the first chocolate greens that actually doesn't taste like absolute shit. So that's also <laughs> great marketing, nice. buddy. So I'm gonna drink this. Watch I'm sure the they'll show, pay you extra and then have one more for meal. dropping in that sword. Like a protein ice cream and some shit in that. We'll see how I feel when the time comes. A delicious final meal. A nice sandwich. I missed. Wow, not bad. All right, so final meal slash snack of the day. Like I said. Two, two more years on this diet. I mean, I'm assuming this guy's taken some drugs to slow down his hair loss too, but when you consume these conventional foods, the omega-6 in the diet is so high. He really needs to reduce that, get some omega-3 in here and there, You know, reduce the inflammation, go organic. A lot can be done to improve this diet. I mean, he's drinking water and plastic. He's got all this supplements and stuff in plastic. I mean, little plastic isn't the end of the world, but if you're not injecting all the crap like this guy is, you can... Uh, go to Frankie's for your range meat and get some lamb testicles uh, to uh, replicate the testosterone that he's taken to counteract the estrogenic effects of the plastics. I said often in my off season I have five meals and if I'm hungry after I'll squeeze in a shake and something like a peanut butter banana sandwich that I'm having today or I'll just have five big meals in a day and call it that but I was actually hungry right now and I just put this in my fitness pal, my, my caloric intake for the day is higher than I thought to be honest and it's pretty crazy because I'm still hungry eating all this but this last meal is one scoop of this protein and this is one I love having a light protein this is why I made this because post-workout and like late at night I just want like a light shake it's the vanilla oatmeal cookie flavor so I have one scoop of that in here it was just water and then I have a peanut butter banana sandwich it's like 34 35 grams of peanut butter on here, half a banana, two slices of this like organic whole wheat bread. That hey, it's organic, so, woo! Very delicious. We got something. And that's it, that's the end of the full day of eating. And as simple as that, I have ingested 4,558 calories. I mean, I don't think this guy is actually eating a lot of calories for his size. You know, I was eating like 3,300, 3,500 when I was doing my bodybuilding transformation, and I don't think I have even half as much muscle as this guy. And if you do want to know why protein powder in general can be bad for you, I did a whole video on it. I think it's titled, Is Whey Protein Bad For You? that you can go watch. I go over the additives, the quality of the whey used in the protein powder. And we do have protein powder available on frankiesfreerangefoods.com. You know, I think I said in the middle of this video, you know, is this really what he's eating? You know, is he secretly eating super high quality organic foods? I don't, I don't we'll never know. We'll never know. You know, I mean, it's unlikely considering, you know, the rest of the stuff he's doing. But, you know, these people tend to put on an act when they get to a certain level of popularity, you know, just to fit in with the general population as, you know, God forbid everyone realizes how to be actually healthy. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully this gives some bodybuilders and some conventional thinkers insight on how they could change their diet uh, to something healthier, something that removes the negatives and improves the positives. Uh, so if you guys could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and check out frank stefanocom for anything I've mentioned in this video. Thanks again. I'll see you guys tomorrow.